Okay, good morning, grade nines that are watching this, and please let me know because I'm really just send me the feedback of which videos work, which don't work. Did anyone actually watch this? There were some of you that couldn't make the lesson on Monday, the 15th of June. I can see who's on the call for which parts of the lesson, so I can see that some of you left early presumably you had wi-fi issues and i saw that some of you are on and off so you know just based on that i know that a lot of you didn't get the content that we did on monday and for those that were in the lesson maybe it would be useful to have a little recap video that runs through it i didn't want to put up a full 45 minute recording of our lesson because it would end up being quite long and tedious to be honest so i thought let me redo this lesson in recorded form it's not an ed puzzle, so it's, I might ask you a question. The video is not automatically going to pause, so I'll try and give you a second to answer those. So the first things first, let's draw ourselves a very thick set of Cartesian plane axes. So that's our starting point that we're starting to hopefully get a bit more comfortable with things living on this Cartesian plane. So I gave you any point and I said, OK, the point 0 minus 12. So they're going to be some graphs and we said for line 1 we know two points that lie on the line. We've got 0 minus 12 and where would you plot that? Well 0 along the x-axis means we're somewhere over here because we haven't gone anywhere left or right and minus 12 means we're in the negative so this must be sitting somewhere over here. We don't have a scale, so I don't know if it's there or a little bit lower, but I'm now saying that that distance is 12. Okay, and the second point, so these bits we're given, and I'm telling you that another point in the graph is at 6, 0. So let's just pause and rewind at this 0, 12. This bit here we're given is the y-intercept. Y-intercept, because it's where it cuts the y-axis. This point here, we can see that the y value is 0, which means it's on the x-axis. So if it's 0 along the y-axis and 6, that means it's a positive 6. It's sitting over here somewhere. So that point is 6 along the x-axis, but nowhere up and down the y-axis. So this here is our x-intercept. It's where it cuts the x-axis. Okay, so we're given those two points, and we're given that the line goes through those two points, so it must look something like that, a very straight line, right? And I'm going to label this L1. Okay, so that's our one line. Our second line, we told two points about it. So these are things that we told, but we're kind of practicing sketching our function as well. I'm going to tell you that one of the points is 0 minus 2, and the other point is minus 1, 1. So hit pause if you want to and try and sketch that, that line. Where are those two points? Okay, so as I said, hit pause. The video is not going to pause itself um, and try and actively engage or remind yourself. So I'm going to start with this point here, 0 minus 2. Okay, I know something special about this point x is 0, which means this is the y-intercept. It's where it cuts the y-axis, this line. So it's 0 and minus 2. Well, if that was minus 12, I'm not going to get this to scale, but it's somewhere over there, let's say. So we've got 0 minus 2. Right? And then we've also got that another point, minus 1, 1. So if this is minus 1, so minus 1, 1 must be sitting over here because it's negative on the x-axis, positive on the y-axis. So it's minus 1, 1, and I'm going to draw a straight line through there. That's our second line that I can label L2. That's what we're told. And we're going to do a few things now. Well, we did, and we are going to do a few things. First, we're going to find the equation of line 1 and the equation of line 2. Then we're going to try and determine two points. We're going to try and determine 
what is the x-intercept of line 2? So that's our first question, what's point A? And our second question is going to be, where are these two lines equal to each other? I'm going to label that point B. And that's what simultaneous equations are. So we're working our way towards what point B is. Okay, so let's start with the equations. So the first things first, L1. We're dealing with line one. What's the equation, the general, the standard form for any straight line equation? Well, have you got it down? Some idea? Y equals mx plus c. And what do each of these bits mean? Well, y is our output. So let's actually put everything here. Y is our output when we input some number x. So if I input the number 0, I know that I'm going to get an output of negative 12. If I input the number 6, I know that there will be an output of 0. That's our input-output. Okay. M. Gradient starts with M, right? So M is our gradient. And then what we found out was that C is the y value of our y intercept. Okay, so that's what we're getting from our standard form. Are we given any of these these points here? Are we given any of these points? Well, yes, we got this y intercept over here. We're told that well, let's just give ourselves some space here. That negative twelve is our y intercept. So if we substituted this whole point in, then let's substitute it once and say, wherever we see a y, we're going to put a negative 12. M we don't know. Wherever we see an x, we're going to put a 0. And we're going to add c. Now notice that 0 times m just gives us 0. So minus 12 equals c. You do not have to show this step, but this is why it works that the c just always works out to be the y-intercept. It's some, something very useful about the function being in this form. So therefore, our equation so far is y equals mx plus c. No, wait, what is c? Negative 12. Okay, so we know one thing so far. Now we have two options to find m. And I want to show both options. You could choose which option you want to take. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle to say we've got our two options to find m choose one of them whichever one you're more comfortable with the one is to say we know gradient is rise over run we're going to use this and we need that concept of gradient to say gradient is how steep something is so if something's going up then it's got a positive gradient it's got a kind of a positive steepness for every one step you go across you're going to be going up and if something's going down, then for every one step you go across, you're going to be going down, so it's going to have a negative gradient. So let's pause on that to look at this pink line, the L1, and say, when you're going across, so when you're going across left to right, are you going up or are you going down? Well, as you go across, you can see that you're going up. So as you go across, you go up, which means that it must have a positive gradient. For every one step you go across, you're going up. So m equals rise over run. Between these two points, 0, 12, minus 12, and 6, 0. We're trying to see what's our rise, what's our run. I always start with the run because I always like to start with the x values. It's really up to you. I just like to be consistent all the time so that I don't end up swapping them around by mistake. So the x values, I'm going from 0 to 6. So how far am I running to get from 0 to 6? Well, I'm running by 6. How far am I rising to get from negative 12 up to 0? Well, from negative 12 up to 0, risen by 12. So 12 divided by 6, 2. So our gradient is 2, and we can go great stuff, y equals this m we're going to replace with 2, 2x minus 12. Now, for any input, we can find out the output. For any output, we could find out the input. 
Okay, option two for finding out the gradient is we could just substitute the second point in. So we could say, let's sub in the point 6, 0. So whenever we see a y, we're going to put a 0. 0 equals m, because mx, we don't know what m is. Wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with 6. So 6 minus 12. So we've taken our equation as we know it so far and subbed in the values, this point here. Okay, so negative 12, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. 12 equals an m6 we normally write as 6m. So what we did there was we said let's plus 12 on both sides of the equation. Okay, I don't want 6m, I want m. This was 6 times m, so I want to kind of do the opposite. So divide by 6, divide by 6. So 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 6m over 6 gives me m. So m equals 2, great stuff. Same answer, y equals 2x minus 12. Okay, I was, I've just had a power outage, so let's see how well this works. I don't have that much time. Lucky you. <laughs> so there's our equation. Either way, we did it. Let's do the same for our green L2. Is the gradient of this graph that's going down, is the gradient positive or is it negative? Okay, now how do we know how to answer that? Well, gradient is how steep the graph is, or for every one step across, how far up are you going? Well, for every one step across, we're going down. So we're going, for every step across, we're going in a negative direction. So it's got a negative gradient. So that L1, oh, L2, I almost lined up perfectly there. Can you see it's got a negative gradient? It's going down. So we expect our m to be negative. So let's start with what we know. For L2, y equals mx plus c. Wait a second. Uh, mx c is given to us. 0, negative 2. So we know that the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So therefore, c is negative 2. Now for gradient, I'm going to go for rise over run. So m equals rise over run. Up to you which one you do. And start with my run. I'm going from this point to this point. So I'm going from negative 1 to 0. That's the run. Well, I'm just running by 1. How much am I rising? Well, from 1 to negative 2 is what? Well, that puts 1, then another 2. So we're rising by negative 3. So we're going negative 3. Negative 3 over 1 is negative 3. And let's just pause, instead of just running through the motions, to say gradient is for every one step across, how far up are you going? Well, we went one step from negative 1 to 0, and we went kind of up by negative 3. So there's our gradient, negative 3. We didn't even need that rise of a run stuff. But it was there, so therefore y equals minus 3x minus 2. Okay, cool. So y equals minus 3x minus 2. And again, my lights probably changed a bit because they just came back on. Interesting. So we've got our two equations. For L1, we know now that y equals 2x minus 12. And for line 2, we've worked out that y equals minus 3x minus 2. Great stuff. So that was the first part of the question that we wanted to answer, which was, what are the equations of these lines? Second part is, what is the value of a? Where the green L2 intersects the x-axis. What do we know about point a? How far up or down is it? Well, it's nowhere, right? So therefore, its y value is 0. Whenever we looked at the x-intercept, the y-value was 0. Easy peasy. There's our equation. We know the y-value is 0, right? And the rest we don't know. I don't know what x is. So substitute the bits you know. You'll find out the bits you don't know. Okay, I'm going to add 3x to both sides plus 3x so that we have 3x equals 0 minus 2 minus 2. Okay, I don't want 3x, I want x, so I'm going to divide by 3, whoopsie, 
divide by 3. So 3x over 3 is x, x equals minus 2 over 3. Okay, so didn't just ask us what is the value of x, it said, well, it, I asked you what are the coordinates, so therefore point A is minus 2 thirds 0. And a parturient being an important concept of what's the point, it really is a mark. There's a mark for that and a mark for putting it as coordinate form if it's asked for coordinates, not just an x value. Okay, now the last bit of what we're doing is really the simultaneous equation part. So I'm going to write here simultaneous equations. Now as I go through this, I'm thinking, sure, hope it's not feeling like too much. But I also have trust that you're pausing as you go, going, oh, what did he say there? Pause. Let me just take a breather. Sip my tea. <sighs> Mint tea as well. And go, okay. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, let's keep on track. Simultaneous equations. So for simultaneous equations, I'm going to rewrite these here and say L1, not equals, L1 is y equals 2x minus 12. And our second line we said was y equals minus 3x minus 2. Those were the two ones, right? Yes. Now, simultaneous equations is actually really, really easy. We're asking ourselves, when are the two graphs equal to each other? When does that line equal this line? When does L2 equal L1? When does L1 equal L2? Where are they equal to each other? Isn't like that conceptually what we're doing? We're saying, where are these two graphs equal to each other? Then we'll get that point B. So, in other words, have a look at this. When is L1? L1 we know is y equals 2x minus 12. When is that equal to the other line? Well, y equals minus 3x minus 2. So when does y equal y? Well, when that bit equals that bit. There's an equation. Solve the equation. So let's see what we get. Plus 3x plus 3x. And let's just do this step by step. So I've got 5x, oh, hello internet, 5x minus 12 equals, well those two cancel, that's why I added the 3x minus 2. And secondly, what do we want to do? Well, I don't want that minus 12, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides and have just 5x equals minus 2 plus 12, I think that's 10. And I don't want 5x, I want x. I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5, so therefore x equals 2. Great stuff. Kind of fits in with our picture. B is 2. Okay, but we need to work out the y value. If you're given the input, how do you determine the output of any function? This will always work, by the way, for the next how many years. Well, we just substitute pick your equation. I'm going to just do it here so it's still on the same page. So we're going from there up to there. I'm going to pick the first equation, L1, but it doesn't matter. Y equals 2, we know what X is, 2 minus 12. We're given the input, we're determining the output. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 12 is minus 8. So in other words, when the input is 2, the output is negative 8. Let's do it in the other graph just to really give ourselves our confidence. Y equals minus 3, 2, minus 2. So what we're doing now is saying, well, it shouldn't matter which graph we input it. If we input 2, we should get minus 8 because this point is on both graphs. Well, let's see. Minus 6, minus 2, minus 8. So on that graph, when you input, that's a B, not a 13. When you input 2, you get negative 8. So it doesn't matter which graph you're on. This part here was L2. Or if we input it into L1, we still get the same point. Because B is on both. So just to finish it off, I'm going to put this to say this is negative 8. 
and we work this out to be minus two thirds. It's just nice to keep adding things into our graph. And that's what we've worked out. So we've done quite a few things. A, we've plotted points. Where's neg zero, negative 12? There. Where's six, zero? There. We learned about y-intercepts or revised y-intercepts, revised x-intercepts, revised the standard form of any equation, any straight line function, I should say. We saw that c is just related to our y-intercept. We saw that we could work out gradient by going rise over run and reinforce that positive gradients are going up and negative gradients means the graph's going down. We also reinforced that gradient is for every one step you go across, how far up are you going? We also found gradient by just substituting a point in. And this reinforced an idea that you can always input any, fun any point on the function into the function. So input the bits you know and you'll find out something you don't know. So we found the equations of lines. If we knew what the input was, if we knew what the output was, we could work out what the input was. We knew the output was zero for an x-intercept, so we could find out the input. And finally, for simultaneous equations, we're asking ourselves, when are those two graphs equal to each other? Well, how do you find out when they're equal to each other? You just put them equal to each other and solve. You'll get an x value, and then we can work out the y value by just substituting into the function. And it shouldn't matter which function you substitute into, you'll get the same answer. Okay, that was quite a bit, right? But as I said, let me know which bits are useful, which are less useful. Who's watched this that was actually in the lesson and thought, oh, well, I'm glad that I've got that as, as a redo and a take two of what we've done. For those that couldn't make the lesson or had Wi-Fi glitches and had to leave or weren't able to make it. Was that useful? Really, I'm genuinely asking, how, how are we going to do this? I mean, I'm, oh, you know, I'm so interested in your learning and keeping on learning. So today is Tuesday and you're working on those simultaneous equations. It's the exercise in the textbook, exercise 17.6 on page 197. And there are four graphs for you to do and to work out simultaneously. And what I've done on our website is I've put up pictures of the graph because I think it's really nice to have a picture, not just two equations, but it's nice to see a picture to actually see what your answer should come out to be. Okay, enjoy the day.